Welcome back. Yeah. Uh, one, two, princes kneel before you. That's what I, I, I said now. Princes, princes who adore you. Just go ahead now. One has diamonds in his pockets. Now, that's some bread now. This one says he wants, snurdly, he wants to buy you rockets. Ain't in his head now. This one's got a princely racket. That's that's what I said now. Uh, some big seal upon his jacket. It ain't in his head now. Snurdly, it's not. It's not in his head. I, I know. You marry him, your father will condone you. How about that now? You, you marry me, and your father will disown you. He'll eat his hat now. Marry him, or marry me. I'm the one who loves you, baby. Can't you see? I ain't got no future or a family, snurdly, or a family tree. But I know what a prince and lover ought to be. I know what a prince and lover ought to be. Yeah. Right back on the EIB Network. 24 hours before every single show, there is some other radical, insane bombshell that, that, that reshapes the entire political landscape. We realized last week on this show that after doing an uninterrupted hour of broadcasting, we had not once mentioned that the Republicans had fulfilled their damn near seven-year goal of passing something in the House that would uh, begin to reshape Obamacare. Highly controversial. So much so that the, the, the House Democrats were chanting, na, 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 hey, hey, goodbye, assuming that everybody who had voted for that bill would no longer uh, hold any sway because they would all be voted out in, uh, in what, what, what we like to refer to or Democrats hope for is just the way election in 2018. We we barely mentioned it. We had like one little bitty mention of it, right? Because James Comey was fired last week. I hope that there is literally somebody who is only keeping track of American politics through this show. Number one. Because you are just getting such a funhouse warped version of what is actually happening. If all you are doing is listening to this braying mule. But also because I don't know how on this show we can best quantify what the hell is even happening. Because James Comey was fired a little over a week ago right now. Since then, since then, we have not only had another scandal in betwixt this, 
wherein a Russian delegation came, pictures were taken that uh, were circulated in, in the Russian media despite the fact that they thought that it was only the official photographers from the Russian side and official photographers from the United States side. No, no, no. It was actually a, a media person who was in there not only taking pictures but listening to the conversations between Donald Trump and the Russians. But what's more, that Donald Trump allegedly told the Russian envoy about sensitive material that could endanger our relationship to what is now being reported as Israel. That allegedly the reason why the United States uh, decided to put in a ban on laptops from, uh, uh, from the UK to America is because somewhere in the world... Uh, intelligence was gathered that ISIS was getting better at putting bombs into laptops. So they are taking measures to to do that. That was allegedly gleaned from uh, uh, an Israeli source. Donald Trump repeats it to the Russians. And in the New York Times story, Trump defenders said that they could not use their best line of argument against why this was a big deal. Because the best reason why that was not that big of a deal was because Donald Trump doesn't read his briefings close enough to actually have the kind of information that would single out the Mossad agent that had brought all that information back. Oh, by the way... Where's Donald Trump going at the end of this week? The Middle East, including Israel, where he has apparently also infuriated mega donor Sheldon Adelson because he is not going to move the embassy like he had initially promised on the campaign trail. And he is now willing to make a deal with Mahmoud Abbas to try and bring peace, which, by the way, in a world where Donald Trump does serve out all of his first term, you got to figure that the region is at the right point. Abbas has been in power with the Palestinian Authority for a long enough time that Donald Trump could be the guy who brings peace between the Palestinian Authority and the state of Israel. Like, he's the deal maker. This is the deal that could never get done. He lives in New York. He's used to dealing with Jews. This is just a thing. And that could have been a great show, you guys. You guys. It could have been a great show. Could have been. Could have been. We could have talked all about uh, uh, about that. We could have talked about the history of the uh, uh, Israeli-Palestine conflicts, how close they were to a deal under Bill Clinton, which Bill Clinton, by the way, counts as his biggest failure as president and blames Yasser Arafat. Says that they had, that he had gotten Yasser Arafat as much as anybody had ever gotten. Yasser Arafat walked away from the table. See, this is all stuff that I really enjoy. I like talking about. And then yesterday happens. Oh, Tuesday. Tuesday is prime time, baby. Daddy, that's when all the political news drops. Because James Comey, oh, James Comey not electing to go gently into that dark night. No, he is railing, railing against the dying of the light. The leak comes out yesterday that James Comey has a memo. If 
physical memo that he elected to share with his uh, uh, subordinates in the FBI that upon meeting with Donald Trump privately, one-on-one in the Oval Office, Donald Trump said the following about the FBI investigation, specifically into his former advisor, Flynn. I hope you can let this go. This is the lead here from the New York Times story that broke the news. President Trump asked the FBI director, James B. Comey, to shut down the federal investigation into Mr. Trump's former national security advisor, Michael T. Flynn, in an Oval Office meeting in February. According to a memo, Mr. Comey wrote shortly after the meeting, I hope you can let this go, the president told Mr. Comey, according to the memo. The, the, the documentation of Mr. Trump's request is the clearest evidence that the president has tried to directly influence the Justice Department and FBI investigation into links between Mr. Trump's associates and Russia. Late Tuesday, Representative Jason Chaffetz, the Republican chairman on the House Oversight Committee and a one-man game of Mario Kart, demanded that the FBI turn over all memoranda, notes, summaries, and recordings of discussions between Mr. Trump and Mr. Comey. Such documents... Mr. Chaffetz wrote, would raise questions as to whether the president attempted to influence or impede the FBI. Now, I don't want to get... As any longtime listener of this show knows, uh, I, I, I love dissecting partisan arguments. But I'm going to ask everybody, if you've trusted me on this journey, if you have listened to me throughout the presidential election, walk with me along this path. The problem for Trump here is twofold. Number one, Comey is yet to testify, and we don't know what is in any of these other memos. Kamala Harris yesterday on Twitter was doing a touchdown dance because she was saying it's because of these rumors, because I had heard rumors of this, that I had specifically asked the FBI where all of Comey's notes and memoranda were, if they were secured and if they could be turned over and if they were outside of the influence of the President of the United States. So we don't know what else is there. We don't know what else Comey has put his name on because you guys know that I have been very critical about the sourcing in a lot of these reports. I found the sourcing to be fairly shoddy and terrible, specifically from certain outlets. I don't want to name them, but let's just say their initials are CNN. So, that's the first part. The, the story isn't done yet, and as of now, it looks bad because it's coming from somebody with authority. James Comey is of the, 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 the stature that should he have the goods on Donald Trump. And by the way, when I say the goods, I don't mean that he can prove that Donald Trump was coordinating with Russia to win the election or that he is compromised by the Russians and that he can uh, is funneling information back. I don't mean that. I mean that Donald Trump actively obstructed this investigation. That's a problem for Trump for the second reason. Donald Trump's losing the faith of his own party because his own party believes that in 2018, it's the way. 
That's just a wave. The only power that exists in politics is future power. Not what have you done for me lately. What can you do for me tomorrow? What can you do for me next year? What can you do for me in four years? It's the reason why a a, a lame duck president exists. The president is the most powerful person in the world for all four years of his tenure if he wins a second term in office. So why does nobody give a shit about him past the halfway mark? What can you do for me tomorrow? What can you do for me tomorrow? When Jason Chaffetz, who did not seem to care so much about uh, uh, ruining his credibility for the administration, is out there calling for the memorandum, When Paul Ryan is saying that we this is something we actively need to look into, he walked that back a little bit this morning, but the fact that it came out of his mouth matters. This is the first time since the grab him in the pussy tapes that the, the Republican orthodoxy, and specifically those that were not in love with him to begin with, are now breaking from Donald Trump openly. That's a problem. It's a problem for him. Now, I will always bet against impeachment until it happens, just because it's really hard. But you got to say that the momentum of his administration has totally stalled. And maybe we are just only seeing 4D chess when he is playing 7D chess. And this is exactly what needs to happen so he can effectively implement his agenda. But this has been a terrible, awful, no good, very bad month for this guy. And Coulter. And motherfucking Coulter. He's out here in these streets saying Donald Trump is a disappointment. The way she said it was, she is a one-issue voter. Build a wall. Donald Trump hasn't built a wall, and now it seems like he squandered momentum to do so. He's already moved on to health care. He's already moved on to, uh, uh, to, to tax reform, theoretically, right, if he gets that far. When they ran that uh, budget through Congress, part of it was supposed to be for a wall. They cut that as negotiating fodder. Ann Coulter is like, she wrote a book. In Trump we trust. In Trump we trust. She literally wrote the book about believing in Trump. She is having her faith tested. I'll tell you what, though. Here's one person that is a pretty, pretty, I don't know if happy's the word. I don't know if happy's the word to describe this person. I I would, I would, I would, uh, I would, I'd probably dial up E for elated. Brother Donald. I knew you'd come, says John McCain as he tinkles the ivories. John McCain, this is John McCain yesterday. John McCain hates Donald Trump. Hates Donald Trump. There is literally, literally nobody on earth that I would guess that John McCain hates more in life than John McCain. This is what he said yesterday. Former presidential candidate Senator John McCain responding to multiple reports that President Trump asked former FBI Director James Comey to halt the Bureau's investigation into Michael Flynn said Tuesday evening that Trump's various scandals had reached, quote, Watergate size and scale. He continued, I think we've seen this movie before. I think it appears at a point where it's of Watergate size and scale. The shoes continue to drop and every couple of days there's a new aspect. 
McCain told Bob Schieffer, the retired former host of CBS's Face the Nation, at a dinner where McCain was receiving the International Republican Institute of Freedom Award. The senator told Schieffer that the advice he would give to Trump is the same thing that you advise Richard, Richard Nixon, which he didn't do. Get it all out. It's not going to be over until every aspect of it is thoroughly examined and the American people can make a judgment. The longer you delay, the longer it's going to last. He then, then went hard on the Russia controversy that now is dwarfed compared to uh, uh, this Comey memo. I've known this guy, Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov, for 30 years. He's an old KGB, uh, a, a Patrick stooge, and Putin is a murderer and a thug. And here you have Lavrov in the Oval Office and being friendly with the guy whose boss sent aircraft with precision weapons to attack hospitals in Aleppo. I think it's unacceptable. The only thing that John McCain didn't say, and oh my God, can you imagine how much he wants to be? Can you imagine how much John McCain wants to say, you know, I prefer to celebrate the presidents that weren't impeached. That's what I like. I like the presidents that weren't impeached. Those are the ones. Those are the ones that I like to, to, to celebrate. We got so much more on this. We, 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 have, we, have, we have absolutely so much more on this. Uh, but first, uh, a word from our sponsors. Hey, y'all, it's me, the Ad Dragon. Now, I know what a lot of y'all are thinking. I want to play the number one party game that involves politics and real quotes from presidential contenders and presidents. Well, y'all, how would you head on over to thecontender.us? Well, at thecontender.us, you can go ahead and buy The Contender, the game of presidential debate, y'all. Man, it's better than a chicken biscuit on a Friday morning. You can go on over there and buy not only the game, but also the expansions, with a new one coming out in the next couple weeks, y'all. Also, you can go ahead and get yourself a free copy of the contender or one of the expansions all you got to do is sign on up for the mailing list head on over to bit.ly slash capital c contender capital g games again that is bit.ly slash capital c contender and capital g games also if you want to donate directly to this show well there's a couple ways to do so and we'd like to let you know how they go first Head on over to Patreon.com, Patreon.com slash J-U-R-Y is where you can support this show, or if you are more inclined to subscribe on Twitch, you can do that as well. Head to Twitch.tv, y'all, slash Justin R. Young. Subscribe there. Well... I'll tell you what, I feel like I've overstayed my welcome like a June bug on the windshield. What do you say we go ahead and pass it back to your host, Justin Robert Young? See you later, y'all. Thank you so much to the Ad Dragon. Uh, and, and thank you to everybody who has supported not only uh, the, the contender, but also the Patreon. Yeah, goodness gracious, Boogity B, the Ad Dragon. Controversial, the Ad Dragon. Uh, 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 we had, we had somebody say, uh, how much money do I have to pay to never see the ad dragon again? So I don't know. Let me know. Do you guys like the ad dragon? Or do you not? I I've made my, my, my peace with, uh, with, with the ad dragon. So I'm happy to see him here, but, uh, uh, I, I do, uh, I do want to, I, I want you guys to, to have your, have your say on this. So. Chaffetz is acting like he wants to do something. Paul Ryan is acting like he wants to do something. James Comey has yet to uh, yet to say anything. Oh, also, by the way, the winner of, uh, of this week's free contender is Carrie T. I have to bring that up with the ad dragon. He didn't he didn't read the winner of this week's giveaway. Every day uh, or every week, uh, someone on the 
contender mailing list uh, gets uh, a free expansion or a free game. So, Carrie T, thank you so much for signing up. Part of the show that I had written for today, before everything got blew up yesterday, was the fact that uh, we're at a weird point when it comes to political media, and we officially have uh, somebody calling for Donald Trump's impeachment on the floor of the House. Doesn't really mean much, but... You know, I guess it's symbolic on some level. But I, I, I had this idea that I was going to go into this big theatrical thing about how there really was a conspiracy and I was going to start talking in this voice and then I was going to get more and more animated and then by the end of it I would I would just do the Alex Jones like, uh, like what you got to do is look, you... If you don't open your eyes, then the deep state. I was going to like do a whole big thing, and it was going to be a big monologue. It was going to be fun. Because I genuinely do believe that uh, it is in everybody's best interest that every that uh, anybody reading a newspaper, watching the television, or listening to a podcast or a radio show believes that Donald Trump is close to getting impeached. Traditionally, that's not great news for right-wing media. You know, whoever, uh, whoever is, is getting impeached, the party that is more favorable to, to or the, the outlets that are more favorable to that party, it's usually not good for them, right? Because you kind of get, like, like, what's, like, like, the memes that are happening now with, like, Fox News, where uh, you have, like, CNN, Comey Memo, Shakes DC, MSNBC, Comey Apocalypse, watch Mika Brzezinski and Joe Scarborough kiss in countdown five hours. And then Fox News is like, look at this poodle. I'm <laughs> like, Hillary Clinton caught eating a sandwich. Which I, uh, uh, I think it's unfair. It's people trying to misrepresent Fox News. But you get my drift. But Alex Jones might stand to benefit the most from Donald Trump being excised from the White House. This would be the crowning achievement of Alex Jones' career. Fact. Without a doubt. He is a made man for life if Donald Trump gets impeached. Because Donald Trump will now become his martyr. He, you know, T.T. Steve says he'll just blame the establishment. No, he's already blaming the establishment. The word from Infowars.com. Let's just go ahead. Let's just take a live look here at Infowars. Com. Let's just go ahead and take a look at the headline on what's going on uh, uh, right now. Uh, yeah, here we go. This is uh, this is Alex Jones. Impeachment of Trump could lead to mass riots this summer. Uh, oh, we'll get to this. Russia prepared to release transcript, but let's see. I want to find. I saw something that he tweeted. The phrase deep state coup. There we go. Uh, Dana Bash admits Comey memo is deep state revenge against Trump. <laughs> Muslim psychiatrist slams Islamist leftists for downplaying horror of female genital manipulation. Uh, he believes this is a this is a overthrow. Or, I mean, I don't know how, what he believes, right? His character believes. Uh, this is going to be the most, the biggest financial windfall of his career. Because he will have 
definitive proof that there is a secret society that is controlling the world. There is a new world order that has conquered democracy. And it is up to the freedom fighters who listen to his program to get democracy back. This is indeed a prison planet. This is the info wars. The war for your mind is on. So combine that with the fact that this is record profit for New York Times. Washington Post has never seen. Washington Post is getting election level traffic to their site right now, which is crazy. It's insane. That never happens. We're even outside the first hundred days. Like, this is nuts. Not so, but but so. So I'm not here to say that any news is not real. I'm not saying that anybody's intentionally misleading you. I'm just saying that you can err on the side of believing that everybody in the media is going to be more hyperbolic about things than they would otherwise if this were just a workaday presidency and this was just some political news. From all angles, except for maybe Fox News, who's too busy, you know, putting the Jesse Waters guy on a parking lot roof with a telephoto lens trying to take pictures of, you know, what fruit crepe Hillary Clinton's eating. So other than Fox News, they're in a bit of a disarray right now. But almost everybody else, it's going to be the attack on Donald Trump or will Donald Trump, the greatest poop bag in presidential history, leave the Oval Office? Those are the dueling narratives, and both of them are served by this kind of conflict. So while you are watching, while you are listening, just keep that in mind. Not to say that anybody's intentionally doing something, but just if there's a 50-50 scenario where I can be a little bit more inflammatory or I can not be a little bit more inflammatory, in gen, I think that it's in everybody's best financial interest to just be that little bit more inflammatory. So about this Russia thing. Uh, you know, I didn't really know what to make of this when it was really blowing up. Uh, like we mentioned before, John McCain says this guy's a KGB thug. Today, President Putin, who last week commented on the Comey firing uh, while wearing a full hockey outfit, literally on his way to the ice. Vladimir Putin has now offered to prove that Trump did not pass Russia secrets. Vladimir Putin said on Wednesday that U.S. President Donald Trump had not divulged any secrets during a meeting in Washington with Russian officials and offered to prove it by supplying Congress with a transcript. But a leading U.S. Republican said he would have little faith in any notes that Putin might supply. I don't know. They actually, they spelled, they, you know, this is a leading U.S. Republican politician, which I don't know why they chose that spelling for John McCain. Two U.S. officials said on Monday that Trump had disclosed classified information about a planned Islamic State operation to a Russian foreign minister, Sergei Lavrov, when they met last week, plunging the White House into a fresh controversy. And now uh, Putin has backed him up. This was uh, the, the direct quote from Putin. I spoke to Lavrov today. A smiling Putin told a news conference with Italian Prime Minister Paolo Gentiloni in the Russian Black Sea resort, uh, resort of Sochi. I'll be forced to issue him with a reprimand because he did not share those secrets with us, nor with me, nor with representatives of the Russian intelligence service. It was very bad of him. What a smirking shitbag Putin is. 
I, I can't imagine if if, if uh, he's just he's just got to be an intolerable person to deal with, right? People are pointing out in the chat that Trump said, yeah, I did say it. I'm allowed to say it. I said it. <sighs> the thing is, Trump is allowed to say it. it. It just depends on exactly what he said, and it depends on... Uh, Powering down. I only have time and energy enough for one major controversy at a time. That's it. Just one major controversy at a time. That's the only thing. So right now we got the Comey thing. I just can't deal with it. There is one thing that uh, that is not related to this uh, that we can talk about. This is uh, from the Washington Post today. Uh, that is dealing with uh, Donald Trump's trip to the Middle East coming up at the end of the week. Part of Trump's plans while he's out there will be to unveil an Arab NATO. Uh, Arab... Arab NATO, huh? For those of you who are not aware, NATO was the you know, North American Treaty Organization formed by Western countries with stable democracies to battle the influence of Russia. An Arab NATO would be a gathering of Islamic countries in the Middle East where in exchange for weapons, North Atlantic Treaty Organization, sorry, where in exchange for weapons they would uh, combat ISIS and push back on Iran. This is the, the story today from the Washington Post. When Donald Trump uh, arrives in Rodea this week, he will lay out his vision for a new regional security architecture. White House officials call, call it the Arab NATO to guide the fight against terrorism and push back against Iran. Iran, number one. Arab NATO. Two. As a cornerstone of the plan, Trump will announce uh, one of the largest arms deals in history. Behind the scenes, the Trump administration in Saudi Arabia have been conducting extensive negotiations led by the White House senior advisor Jared Kushner and Saudi Deputy Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salam or Salman Sal Salman Salman. The discussions began shortly after the presidential elections because Saudi Arabia was pissed off at Obama and were eager to see Donald Trump come into office. This fits in Donald Trump's uh, campaign promises that he wants us to be less of the police officer of the world and wants the countries wherein trouble is happening to take more responsibility. Traditionally, things have not worked out well in foreign policy when the United States has, has taken a backseat or a non-leadership role. In the words of the Godfather 3, every time that we think that we are out, they pull us back in. Because as much as American voters hate the idea that we are the world's police, and it gives us a bad reputation abroad, that is really only until, you know, Slobodan Milosevic starts slaughtering people, or... There's a genocide in Rwanda. And then the conversation becomes, well, why is the mightiest military in the world not intervening? War in the Time of Peace. Here's another book for everybody uh, to read. War in a Time of Peace. I believe it is by David Halberstam. It is indeed 
Yeah, Bush, Clinton, and the generals. Focuses on an era in the 90s when it was believed that uh, a traditional military uh, power was obsolete. Air power would rule the day. You would never need to fight a war with troops on the ground. You could literally just bomb key targets and then use political pressure to bring down regimes. It was this belief that led to Bill Clinton saying, hey, let's be less of the world's policemen. And then on his watch, instead of Europe stepping up and taking care of things on their own continent, or anybody giving a any kind of shit about Rwanda, the United States wound up becoming embarrassed until they intervened. So... How will an Arab NATO go? Uh, In general, I think if you want to fund an organization that's going to take care of things, I would think having stable democracies is kind of a key. Just because otherwise, I don't know exactly how reliable some of these countries are. And by that, I mean their governments, obviously. So I don't, I'm no foreign policy expert. I'm literally a guy who does a Rush Limbaugh impression so he can read Spin Doctor's lyrics. But I'm going to guess poorly. That also doesn't matter right now because Donald Trump wants us to talk about literally anything, anything else but what's happening. Uh, yeah, Arab NATO. We're gonna do an Arab NATO, and uh, we're gonna do uh, we're gonna do uh, ponies, ponies. Yes, uh, here uh, everybody gets a pony today. Make America pony again. Well, I, I, I'll tell you what. I know you got a lot of conversations about uh, James Comey, but I got a question for you, Glenn Thrush. What's that? Behind your ear! Ha ha ha! You want to know what, press pool? You want to know what? I'll tell you what. I'm going to get the ponies ready. But what do you say? What do you say? While we're waiting for the ponies, we just all get together and maybe take a little trip, a little trip a What do you say, uh, uh, Maggie Glenn from the New York Times, that you guys head on down to the ATM, get out a hundred bucks and buy a five cent pack of gum because this is Rasmussen reports presidential job approval from May 14th to May 16th. A 1,500 sample of likely voters. I will remind you, for those of you not keeping track, Rasmussen has been the most favorable to Donald Trump. But coming first to the stage, with 44%. It is approve of Donald Trump as president. Cut your headline with a full 12% spread. It is. 56% for disapprove. I wanted to read that because I am very, very, very curious as to where it will be 
next week. Because if Ann Coulter's sick of him, and to be fair, let me let me quote exactly what Ann Coulter said. She said she's losing faith. Because if somebody told you that in six days they were going to get from Los Angeles to Denver, and then they spent three days literally just putzing around Los Angeles, you would say, all right, I mean, he can still get to Denver, get there by plane, you can get there by train, you can get there by bus, you can drive. But, you know, you got to pick it up. And I don't know if being under siege for obstruction of justice is going to do that. Which, by the way, brings me to my, my own secondary conspiracy theory. I believe Donald Trump is going to be guilty of obstruction of justice into an investigation that would have exonerated him. I don't think that there's much there there to the Russia investigation. I think with as much as the FBI has leaked, if there was, we would have heard about it by now. But you can still obstruct an investigation that would have led to your exoneration. That's the funniest outcome of this. And it's the one that I am selfishly rooting for. The Young American. At gmail.com is where you can email this show. I suspect that we are going to get quite a few emails this week. Scale writes, see, what did I tell you? Doesn't matter how pinko left he was. The slow news week came around and bam, it's all hashtag file, file, uh, fire Colbert. And yes, that's all it was. The libtard regressive BuzzFeed reading Samantha B. Watching goddamn Cox. Yes, you can say uh, you can totally use that word. It's funny and instantly signifies your supreme level of knowledge and authority on any subject. Found something to sink their PC language policing teeth into. That's all it was. And that's me saying that. I hate Colbert. That cuck arg. Also, come on, dick jokes. Is that what we're, the political discussion has been reduced to on the left? Going negative didn't work in 2016, and it's not going to work in 2020. Why don't you just hand Trump the 2020 election and get it over with? Because that's what you're doing, Colbert, you goddamn cuck. Such a classy term. I'm so sophisticated. SJW, snowflake, libtard, cuck. Oh, thank you, Scale. Waffleophagus writes, uh, I'm sorry that this is kind of cross-show pollination on topics, but in the pre-show of Night Attack, you talked about the concept of it being impossible for there to be a scandal over faked audio replicated by neural networks to sound like a specific person due to the fact that by the time the technology is good enough, it will be public knowledge well enough uh, to easily discredit it. I would put forth the idea that it is possible for a few reasons. First, photoshopping... Uh, is a very good analog. The concept of airbrushing a photo had been in commonplace for years, decades, honestly, I don't know. So it's just a digital version of that. Second, Photoshop was in the public mind much faster than uh, what we see currently with neural networks synthesizing human voices because, well, it's a lot easier uh, of a concept to explain. Third, this one is verging on conspiracy theory territory. I mean, it is a conspiracy theory, so please distance it from the logic before on this one. We have people that are on record for saying completely absurd things. So making a computer, for instance, make a presidential candidate say something along the lines of grab her by the pussy from a hot mic is something definitely believable by the public. And given the fact that the audio is somewhat sketchy and dipping it in and out is not a stage thing, it isn't a stretch. For the record, I don't believe this to be true. So I've had this conversation with a couple of people over the last few days. Uh, thank you for writing in, Waffleophagus, about the idea that we could see that neural networks are getting so good at synthesizing human speech that we could see a scandal based on completely fabricated audio. Uh, I, I discount this for a couple reasons. Number one, there are already a lot of things that can start a presidential scandal, uh, uh, including faking emails that... We really haven't seen a, a lot of that. We, we've, we've 
it, it's been hard to try to pass off a totally fabricated email as real. Number two, my, my point about Photoshop isn't that everybody knows what Photoshop is, but rather that there are Photoshop experts who know the difference between Photoshop and not Photoshop. They know the scenes. It is hard, verging on impossible, to create a Photoshop that even the most sophisticated people who work with the technology couldn't spot. And I would say that that would be similar to the neural network stuff. That the better the tech gets, it's not that people know more about it, but rather that there will be experts out there that will say, hey, now, I think this might be neural networked. That's my point. Greg writes, You should really watch Get Me Roger Stone on Netflix. Your buddy, I forgot his name, the one who brought you onto BitTorrent News, is in it for like eight seconds. It's right up your alley. Uh, maybe that's Michael Shore. That's Michael Shore. I love Michael Shore. Michael Shore got a new gig, by the way. Big ups to Michael. Brian and Indy says, I only started listening to your show fairly recently, so I don't know if you've covered the scandal involving Governor Robert Bentley in Alabama. If you did not, there's some great stuff, including the governor opening his hotel room door, expecting to see his mistress wearing only his underwear. Uh, this is old news, so you may not want to get into it, but the man who Governor Bentley appointed to replace Jeff Sessions was Luther Strange. He is the former Alabama uh, attorney general and was leading the investigation into Bentley. He allegedly made a deal to drop the investigation in return for being appointed as Sessions' replacement. The new governor has called for a special election. This may be an interesting election considering the history. Man. I hope that one day we can get back into silly uh, uh, scandal stuff. And it's not all this gigantic stuff. But, uh, you know, dare to dream. I'll see you guys next Tuesday when all the political news breaks, apparently. A reminder that we're giving away one free contender expansion a week uh, for people on our mailing list. Go ahead and sign up now. Bit.ly slash capital C contender capital G game. And buy the contender at thecontender.us. Email theyoungamerican at gmail.com. Music provided by Valesco and Trap Killers. Follow me at Justin R. Young everywhere. Go ahead and yell at me on Snapchat at Justin R. Young. Download archived episodes of this show at bonerwars.com. Some shows talk about politics. Others talk about politics. Still more discuss politics. This is the only one that talks about all three. I will see you all next week. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>